Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We got a big uh, Kentucky Derby trail prep race official points weekend, and we're going to take a look at a couple of races. I don't know if there's a Kentucky Derby winner in them, but they're interesting races. Yeah, I don't know if we can call them big even, Matt. I'm, I'm thoroughly disappointed to tell you the truth with the three Kentucky Derby uh, prep races this week. I, uh, the, 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 the Robert B. Lewis in Santa Anita is a four-horse race. They're all second stringers from the same trainer, Bob Baffert. That's, that's not good for racing, Matt. That's not good for California racing. That's not good for anybody. There's, there, there's a points race where no points can be handed out. The East Coast, we got two better races, I guess, but the most interesting one is the Holy Bull in Gulfstream Park, and we're going to start with that because it at least has some, I don't know, potential uh, horses in there who could get better. But no, I don't think there's a Kentucky Derby winner there, nor do I think the six-horse field in the Withers. But we're still looking at these Kentucky Derby points races, Matt, and we're still looking them as uh, betting opportunities this weekend. So without further ado, let's jump in. We'll go to the Holy Bull first. We've got a field of eight, Matt. Uh, I think Cyclone Mischief is the headliner here, but uh, when I uh, made this morning line, I, I thought Lord Miles getting blinkers, getting Irad Ortiz might end up as the favorite. Yeah, you never know. As, as soon as you say that Irad Ortiz is riding, um, and couple that with the fact that Safi Joseph uh, is the trainer. Uh, any horse with those combinations are, are going to get played. Um, and and Lord Miles has a pretty good record uh, with a third place finish last time in the Mucho Macho Man, which is the first sort of Derby prep, not an official points race at Gulfstream Park. Um, and, and in that, he was beaten less than a length while finishing third and was a debut winner of his maiden special weight at Gulfstream Park also. Um, that means he's going to get played some. Yeah. In fact, I, I, I think he will be the favorite. Uh, that, that's my that's my uh, pick. Uh, Lord Miles actually overcame trouble and romped home in his debut at Gulfstream Park. And then last time he was flying down the lane, Legacy Isle. Uh, was uh, faltering just a little bit. He actually got DQ'd from the win. Lord Miles was making up gobs of ground late. I think uh, betters are going to like that. Lord Miles, an interesting horse with only two career starts for trainer Safi Joseph. The number two, Matt, is also from the barn of Safi Joseph Jr., West Coast Cowboy. He's also lightly raced, but uh, he doesn't look as good on paper as his stablemate. No, I guess he starts out on paper similar to his stable mate uh, because he was also a winner of his first career start at Gulfstream Park for West Coast Cowboy. That happened uh, back in September. After that, he finished fourth in an, in an allowance race, but he has been off since November. And to me, that's a little bit of a concern for a Safi Joseph runner. Yeah, uh, West Coast Cowboy certainly wasn't as impressive as Lord Miles in that debut win either. And then last time he was beaten, uh, which Matt said, it's been a few months now, but he was beaten pretty easily by Legacy Isle, who we're going to talk about quite a bit in, in a minute. Number three is uh, is one of two for trainer Bill Mott, Hall of Fame trainer Bill Mott, who, of course, won the Pegasus World Cup down there at Gulfstream Park. Uh, Shadow Dragon, a New York bred who came from the clouds, also a debut winner. Uh, but then when he tried tougher competition last time, Matt, he, he showed very little. Yeah, that's true, Brian. Uh, debut winner at Aqueduct back in September against New York breds, then tried a stake, as you mentioned, against New York breds. That was won by a horse that is probably going to be the favorite or one of the favorites for sure uh, in the Withers. I think the best thing we can say about Shadow Dragon is that he is trained by Bill Mott. And right now, I tell you, Brian, uh, uh, you got to give a second look to any horse that Bill Mott is putting out in a stakes race. 
Yeah, and again, art collector, uh, really impressive. And it's coming from just off the pace in the Pegasus World Cup for one of the best trainers for a long time in Bill Mott. Number four, Matt, is probably the horse to beat. I think a lot of people think Cyclone Mischief for trainer Dale Romans will go favorite on Saturday. He's coming off a very nice allowance win at Gulfstream Park in his fourth lifetime start. He's actually won two of his four races, the son of Into Mischief, was uh, well liked before he even hit the track, and uh, you know his is. It's hard to knock. Even his two losses look pretty good. If we switch over to the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt, we'll see that uh, Cyclone Mischief is uh, on a good spot there, stalking the speed. Cyclone Mischief, you gotta like his last win. Yeah, that's for sure, and and you know certainly is the buzz horse. Uh, heading into the race, but I guess some of that comes from trainer Dale Romans, who we know uh, is not shy about promoting his horses um, when he thinks he has a good one. And Romans has been high on Cyclone Magic, so, excuse me, Cyclone Mischief since he got into his barn. Uh, Romans has been looking at him as a Kentucky Derby possibility, a son of Into Mischief, has pressed the pace in the past, broke his maiden in his second try at Keeneland by more than uh, five lengths, then jumped up and tried the Kentucky Jockey Club, the grade one on the Kentucky Derby Trail, finished seventh, but then, as you mentioned, Brian came back in January at Gulfstream Park with a really impressive allowance victory by almost six lengths. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting, Matt, uh, that in that Kentucky Jockey Club, which he stretched out to two turns at uh, Churchill Downs and, and faced a field that uh, was won by Instant Coffee, who's gone on to win another uh, stakes race since, he was beaten less than three lengths as he uh, as he forged to the lead and, and, and was pretty game there. There was a, a gaggle of horses uh, uh, that passed him, but he was not giving up in that Kentucky Jockey Club. Also, the win at Gulfstream Park, Matt, uh, there's some well-liked horses in that race that he beat off and he beat easy in pretty fast time. So uh, coming up to the race in the right way. And yeah, you're certainly right. Uh, trainer Dale Romans is high on Cyclone Mischief. And we've seen that before. Sometimes Dale's is, Dale is right on with who he's high on. And sometimes uh, there is a little uh, overconfidence there involved with Dale Romans. We'll see about Cyclone Mischief. All right, number five on the list, and if you saw it on the Time Force, Time Form U.S. pace projector, Mr. Bob is the second horse adding blinkers. Mr. Bob, a son of practical joke, Matt, uh, he ran some good races, uh, breaking his maiden second out, uh, a good performance in a stakes race at Churchill Downs, and then Mr. Bob had some trouble early last time in the Mucho Macho Man. Yeah, an interesting horse, Uh Mr. Bob, in that he is trained by Rob Falcone Jr., who is a New York-based trainer year-round, um, and interesting also because they claimed this horse for $75,000 in his debut, obviously in a maiden claimer, where he uh, finished third, and Falcone has left this horse down uh, in in Kentucky when he came back and broke his maiden in his next start in a maiden claimer again, but this one was for a $150,000 tag, left him down in Kentucky. You mentioned finishing second in that uh, stake at Churchill Downs and then, then going to Florida to run in the Mucho Macho Man. So interesting that uh, Falcone and the other owners claimed this horse for a pretty big amount of money, um, but then Falcone, um, I guess, has had intentions to uh, to try the Derby Trail with this guy. Yeah, and, and he certainly deserves another shot off the Mucho Macho Man. Again, he had some trouble early on. On the other hand, watching that race, you could really see Lord Miles leaving him behind as both horses were trying to rally in the stretch. It was Lord Miles, the one that was really running at the end. Mr. Bob was... Uh, slowly gaining a little bit in the mucho macho man 
practical joke. I, I can see why they claimed him early for a pretty good sum, uh, very consistently good uh, sire. But on the other hand, I, I, don't, I don't know that I love them as they go longer. Mr. Bob, still an interesting horse, as is the number six, not Legacy Isle. And if we go back to that pace projector, you'll see Legacy Isle where he belongs uh, on the pace projection because Legacy Isle has a lot of speed. In fact, last time he showed more speed probably than ever in the Mucho Macho Man. He, at one point, the announcer down there uh, said uh, he's going as fast as he can and see how long he can go. And, and he did last in the Mucho Macho Man at a mile. This is just a little bit farther. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he shows all that speed again here. But Legacy Isle has never been headed to the wire. Only a steward's dis decision to disqualify him for interference late in the Mucho Macho Man has uh, prevented a perfect record. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, 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 interesting uh, horse, Legacy Isle, a son of Shackelford. Um, three for three, as you mentioned. Uh, all those wins at Gulfstream Park. So obviously uh, uh, loves the, the race course. Uh, we'll see. Uh, um, What's the strategy going to be? Are they going to try and hold that speed back a little bit? Or are they going to recognize there's maybe a chance for him to get loose on the lead and settle down? Um, but, Brian, for a horse that's three for three, I have a feeling that he's going to get overlooked a little bit and maybe be the third choice. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's where I had him on our morning line, Matt. I think he will be the third choice, even though – He's won all three of his starts at Gulfstream Park again, DQ'd once in the Mucho Macho Man, but uh, finished first in all three. Uh, I, I do worry about him a little bit, uh, seeing that stretch run of the Mucho Macho Man, and now I think Cyclone Mischief, with very good tactical speed, might be better than the horses that were chasing him last time or close to him early and stuck around to chase him all the way down the stretch in this one. But you certainly have to respect the speed and uh, the record at Gulfstream Park for Legacy Isle. And as Matt said, likely a third choice with pretty good credentials. Il Miracola, Matt. Il, Il Miracola is, uh, is a horse that uh, we've seen a few times here on Horse Center. Uh, you see him uh, kind of in the middle of the pack early. He looks like a long shot to me in this uh, Holy Bull field. Yeah, Brian, uh, 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 a son of gun runner from our friend uh trainer antonio sano uh won his maiden special weight at gulfstream park in his fourth try and then in a couple of stakes races uh didn't really f fare very well seventh in the mucho macho man and before that sixth in the remsen up in new york yeah maybe we can uh maybe, maybe we could draw a line to that uh, sloppy track in the Remsen, but uh, the uh, race in the Mucho Macho Man certainly doesn't uh, give you much confidence going forward in the Holy Bull. Number eight certainly is an interesting horse, Matt, and I could see him getting bet even more than uh, his uh, six to one morning line. His name is Rocket Can, and he is the other horse, uh, probably the top candidate from trainer Bill Mott. And Rocket Can is uh, coming off a couple nice races up north. Yeah, we can kind of uh, uh, look at two halves of the four horse, the four race career of Rocket Man. He started out his career uh, relatively early on with two maiden special weights uh, starts at Saratoga that were not really noteworthy in any way. But then uh, when he was uh, shipped down to Churchill Downs uh, for uh, the fall and and for 2023, um, his form turned around, uh, a win in a maiden special weight at Churchill Downs, and then a second coming right back in an allowance under the Twin Spires. Yeah, and I said it with Cyclone Mischief because there were some uh, promising horses that Cyclone Mischief finished ahead of, well ahead of, in that allowance at Gulfstream. Rocket Can, that allowance race that he ran last time, that was a pretty good two-year-old allowance race. Uh, there were several horses well-liked in that one as well, and he was a game second there for Bill Motti, certainly on the improve. He goes to South Florida, new track, new type of track down there at Gulfstream Park, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do.
but uh, don't uh, don't sleep too much on that second place finish in that allowance race because it was a very good field up at Churchill Downs last time for Legacy Isle. All right, Matt, that's the uh, field for the Holy Bowl. We got one new thing that we wanted to show you, uh, Horse Racing Nation. Being that we are Horse Racing Nation, Matt, we wanted to bring out one of their many great handicapping products. This is Track Trends, and we're just looking at uh, dirt races around two turns at Gulfstream Park recently. Art Collector, of course, being part of this, Matt. I don't think there are any real surprises here. You see that the middle post positions are pretty good, a little bit better than the inside post positions. Also, we're seeing that it's good to be pretty close to the pace at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, and that's no surprise if you follow racing and follow Gulfstream Park. Uh, that's not a big surprise. These are 19 races in dirt routes that have happened in the calendar year 2023. Um, and it's just one of many uh, uh, racing products that you can get from Horse Racing Nation. If you uh, if you subscribe to the service, you can sort by rate by surfaces, distances, all kinds of things, uh, get trends in uh, trainers, jockeys. Um, so if you're into those kind of formulator type products uh, that, that you can also get from Horse Racing Nation. Yeah, and, and looking at this particular track trend, again, for two turns on dirt at Gulfstream Park, it's a relatively small sample of only 19 races, but I, I wouldn't be too worried about the outside post positions. Not that that's a great place to be, but in an eight-horse field, uh, they're not too far out, and, and you see those low numbers for seven up in post positions, but you'll also see the average number of runners in those races are only 7.4, meaning they've had very... A uh, few chances to uh, to win from the outside. I would be a little bit more concerned, maybe for a horse like Lord Miles, because you see, if you're more than four lengths out early, your chances of winning at Gulfstream Park so far this year have not been great. Anyway, that's Track Trends, one of the great products at Horse Racing Nation. We're going to keep looking at those a little bit in the show as we move forward. But for now, Matt. We're going to go. We're not going to go to California. We're not going to look at that Bob Baffert four horse race. Bob Baffert's second string. Oh my gosh. I, it, it makes my heart ache a little bit to see when I saw the entries for that Bob Lewis four horses, all trained by the same guy and, and, and really none of his best horses either. Maybe we're, uh, uh, maybe one of them will prove to be a Kentucky Derby horse. We'll see. But anyway, we're going to go to New York for the Withers. Matt, uh, nine furlongs, nine furlongs, or, or is it eight and a half or nine furlongs? No, nine furlongs, Bri. It, it is nine furlongs, yeah. I, I thought it was. I see a, a, a small typo there on our race graphic. It's nine furlongs, not eight and a half. And we have a field of six. Um, not a world beater field, Matt, but I think there's at least two good horses that we should talk about. Let's start from the rail out, though. Uh, and we're certainly going to bring in the time form U.S. pace projector for this one because I think it's a key part of this race. Uh, 90% Matty. Matt is uh, one of the top trainers in the mid-Atlantic region. He's coming up from parks for trainer Butch Reed Jr., who we know well. And uh, a pretty good speed horse, but he's only sprinted so far in his career. Yeah, Brian, and, and Butch Reed, it, you know, he ships up to uh, New York uh, anytime he's got a horse that he thinks is pretty good, and 90% Maddie is a Pennsylvania bred, and then thus, you know, uh, uh, began uh, his career at Parks, where he is based. He won his first three starts in a maiden special weight, and then in a Pennsylvania bred stake, and then in an allowance race and lost it the first time in his career in his most recent start in the parks juvenile. But, Brian, he ran second behind a pretty good horse named Recruiter, who is four for four with a perfect record in his career. Yeah, he's run against some pretty good horses. He's actually lost his last two, Matt, last two open stakes races after winning his first three. Um Never been beyond seven furlongs. He showed speed every time. Even in his two losses against Open Stakes Company, he's run well. Not a, not good enough to win. Um, talented horse on the rail. Speed. 
and speed is going to become a refrain as we go through these horses, although not so much for number two, General Banker. I think he's one of only two horses in the race, Matt, that likes to uh, come from off the pace a little bit. General Banker's only won one out of nine career starts, his son is Central Banker. He did get that stakes win two starts back against New York Breds. Uh, last time he was uh, a, a reasonable showing in the Jerome, although he wasn't really close to Arctic arrogance. No, Brian, and, and just a little bit more about his record. Um, you mentioned all those starts and then breaking his maiden. That maiden win was in a New York Stallion Series uh, stakes race. It was a it was an interesting field in that uh, uh, Stallion Series where at least half of the horses. It was a big field. I think it was like eleven horses. At least half of them were maidens. So yes, he broke his maiden in a stakes race, but it was you know uh, an an interesting kind of stakes race. And then came back. Uh, facing open company in the Jerome, finished third, and picked up some Kentucky Derby points, which uh, I don't think we could have said uh, about any of the horses in the Holy Bull. Yeah, yeah, there, 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 there is some more experience in this short field in the Withers, that's for sure. I'm bringing up the time form U.S. pace projector again, Matt, because I, I, I mentioned that there's only two horses in here who like to rally. You see the number two there, Central Banker, or General Banker, a son of Central Banker. And number five, Hit Show, who we're going to talk about more, the ralliers. The other four horses are all speed horses. The thing I do worry about General Banker, both pedigree-wise and what I've seen so far in his form, is I don't know nine furlongs, two turns is going to be his game. I think he might be a more effective horse rallying shorter. I wanted to like General Banker because of the pace scenario that looks almost certain to happen here in the Withers. Uh, but uh, I, I just don't trust him at the distance. Number three is one of those speed horses, Arctic Arrogance, Matt. He's the horse to beat. He's the horse with the credentials. He's run in a bunch of stakes races since winning first out at Saratoga, and, and, and they've all come at Aqueduct now with the situation at Belmont Park. So he's run in four straight stakes races in New York. He's won one, and he's been second in three. Yeah, and uh... – Second in the Jerome, second in the Remsen um, on the Kentucky Derby Trail. That gives him eight Derby points at uh, right now. Included in there is uh, uh, races where he has already gone the two turns at Aqueduct. He has gone the mile and an eighth. You know that's a that's a big ask for any of these young three year olds, but especially at Aqueduct where the where the track can be deep and where the track can be tiring. It's no easy task to get nine furlongs there. And as you mentioned, Arctic Arrogance is going to face some speed or, or other horses that want to be out, out part of the early pace. Um, Arctic Arrogance is a gray son of uh, Frosted, one of Brian's favorite horses of, of all times. Um, both of his wins were earlier in his career against New York Breds. And interestingly, Brian, um, as it's noted on the screen, Arctic Arrogance is getting blinkers on. I don't know if he needs blinkers to help him get more on the lead, but blinkers are going on. Yeah, Linda Rice said uh, blinkers uh, will help him uh, kind of run away from horses here in, in the wither. So we'll see. Apparently he's worked well with them, but yeah, often it adds speed. And again, looking at the pace projector, there are four horses in here who are real uh, speed horses. Even the six, who is fourth early on this pace projector, is a speed horse. So a six horse race, four horses, certainly speed horses. It makes you wonder uh, what kind of... Uh, 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 reserve these horses are going to have for this nine furlongs for the stretch run at Aqueduct here, including the likely favorite Arctic Arrogance, who's been a really good horse. He hasn't won anything but New York bred races yet, but I tell you what, that race in the Remps and at nine furlongs at Aqueduct was really good. It was a sloppy track, but he's he's run well on fast tracks too. So Arctic Arrogance is the horse to beat, but probably the pace does not set up well for him, nor does it set up well for the next horse, Matt, another New York bred stakes winner. Another speed horse, 
Andiamo a Firenze is, uh, is, is a horse who's tried in open company and just has not looked as good against open, uh, open company stakes horses. Yeah, and, and uh, I think part of that statement, which is absolutely true, isn't necessarily uh, that it was against open company. I think most significantly it was the stretch out in distance. Uh, he was fourth in the Champagne, stretching out to a mile, and then he was fifth in the Jerome, um, picked up a few uh, derby points in there. Um, so... Uh, uh, he's a horse that certainly wants to be on the lead and certainly is going to, you know, present a challenge to, uh, uh, to Arctic arrogance in terms of, uh, being able to carry that speed, uh, a mile and an eighth. Once again, um, uh, Ariamil Afrenze, both of his wins also, came against New York Reds. Yeah, in a lot of ways, he he reminds me of Arctic Arrogance, just probably not quite as good. Uh, but uh, New York Red Stakes winner, a lot of speed, and he's been uh, a, a regular, a fixture in, in a lot of New York Red Open uh, or New York Red Stakes races of late. Uh, we have somebody joining us there on, on uh, should, we, should, we, should we bring him in? No, no. Oh, okay. We're, we're not going to bring it. I saw Ed DeRosa on the screen for just a second, and I thought he wanted to join Horse Center. Maybe not. Yeah. Number five, Matt, Hit Show. Hit Show is from Brad Cox, and Hit Show has been a good-looking rallying winner in two of his first three races, Matt. I like the rallying factor as Hit Show now comes to New York. Yeah, he, he sure... You know, look, let's face it, uh, uh, he comes from the Brad Cox barn, which is right now loaded with promising three-year-olds. He was entered in the Southwest Stakes at Oaklawn Park. Brad Cox had other runners in that uh, field. The weather was pointing to uh, a sloppy track, which it turns out that it was. Um, so uh, Cox opted for the withers with hit show it sure seems like he made the right choice there for so many reasons um he doesn't have to face any of his stable mates in here he doesn't have to face any runners from bob baffert in here um and like you said uh really is getting the pace set up he was a debut winner um for brad cox then was fourth in an allowance at churchill and then came back and won an allowance at Oaklawn Park, um, running with Lasix. Yeah, yeah. The last one was good at Oaklawn Park at a mile. And, and again, he rallied just like he did in that maiden debut performance at Keeneland. At Keeneland, by the way, he overcame uh, some uh, serious traffic uh, to win going away there in his debut. Churchill Downs, the allowance race is scary. It's that same allowance race I mentioned with Rocket Ken. So it was a very good allowance race. And I think it favored horses on or near the lead that afternoon at Churchill Downs. This one will be the opposite where it should favor horses who want to rally. And that's probably why we're both talking about hit show so much. But he's shown a lot of promise in the other two starts, the first and the third start in his three race career. So he looks like a live shipper for trainer brad cox number six is prove right a very experienced horse a son of justify matt who's coming out of sprints he's tried stakes before without not a lot of success i guess he got a third in the nashua looked a little light uh, as as an addition of the nashua uh coming out of sprints lately uh, uh, another horse who really likes to show early speed yeah hey uh i don't think he's uh contender to win this race but it is worth saying this is a son of justify who they purchased for only fifteen thousand dollars as a yearling uh kind of old school brian 11 starts already um and has earned almost one hundred and fifty thousand. so that was a great purchase of this horse by the connections and trainer james chapman yeah, 11 starts in his first eight months on the racetrack. Uh, I wonder if that will catch up with him at some point. But uh, yeah, looks like 
looks like more speed here. We also should mention the weather forecast, Matt, because you guys out there in the East Coast are expected to have a very cold few days out there. Um, looking at the Saturday forecast, it looks like it could be downright frigid. And, and I guess there's even a chance that the uh, the Withers card could, could get moved or, or at least the Withers uh, the card could be moved and the withers could be maybe run the next day, Sunday. Yeah, I don't know, Brian. Uh, last I saw, the high temperatures were going, were supposed to be in the 20s. I guess that's kind of in the area where it's possible that uh, uh, racing could get canceled. So, uh, you know, we'll see. I think it'll depend on whether it's a sunny day and, and how windy it is and other factors. Uh, involved in that, but I think they would be reluctant to cancel, but uh, in New York, they will if it's necessary. If it's necessary, that's right. Well said, Matt. All right. Uh, well, we did the Holy Bowl. We did the Withers. Again, we're staying away from that race out in California with uh, only one trainer involved, Matt, so we're going to jump into our top picks. I'm going to let you go first. As usual, uh, your picks have been a little bit better than mine lately. I, I need to break out of a little bit of a slump here in the uh, in, in the winter. So I'm going to try to do it this weekend. Matt, uh, let's talk Holy Bull first. Uh, Cyclone Mischief could be the favorite. I, on the other hand, think maybe Lord Miles could be the favorite. Uh, you certainly got some interesting other horses in there, like Legacy Isle, Mr. Bob, and Rocket Can. Who is your top pick in the Holy Bull? Brian, I am going to uh, have to uh, make my top pick based on the odds that uh, you've been mentioning. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Legacy Isle um, with the record that we talked about. It, yeah, I get it. I'm also a little concerned about the additional distance. But, Brian, I think as third choice, getting maybe – you know, seven to two, four to one or so um, makes Legacy Isle good value. Yeah, there's value there. I, I, I watched a replay of that Mucho Macho Man. I wanted to, uh, you know, jump on Legacy Isle a little bit because of the speed, uh, the the track and, and all that. But I just couldn't do it watching that race. He looked in the stretch to me. And now he's got to go a little farther, probably against a little bit better. Lord Miles was really, really flying at him in that mucho macho man and legacy isle was bearing out into uh the horse that was behind him the whole way but he's dangerous and any son of shackleford can be game in the stretch like uh you know shackleford was one of the more game horses we've seen in the last 20 years so a dangerous horse and and matt said a key part of the equation there he probably will have value as the third choice. I'm on one of the two favorites. I think Cyclone Mischief is ready to move forward. Um, friends told me about him early on, what a talented horse he was. And he kind of showed it early on, even though he faded a little bit in the Kentucky Jockey Club here. But then that race where he ran at Gulfstream Park, I was so impressed with the fact that he's tactical. I think he can chase Legacy Isle and get the win. Lord Miles, I think, could be any type two. Uh, but uh, coming from farther out of it in the Holy Bowl, probably not a good thing. So I'm on Cyclone Mischief in the Holy Bowl. The Withers, it looks like we agree, probably the second choice, Matt. Who's your top pick? I'm going with Hit Show for uh, all the reasons that we mentioned. He's getting an ideal pace set up with all that speed in there, has shown the ability to sit off the pace a little bit from the barn of Brad Cox, who is looking to win, I think, his fifth Kentucky Derby official points race uh, of the year with Hit Show. Sure, there are questions shipping up to New York, Aqueduct, the, the racing surface, the mile and an eighth, but um, I got to go with Hit Show, and I don't know. It'll be interesting to see whether he's the favorite or Arctic Arrogance is the favorite. Yeah, Arctic Arrogance probably deserves to be the favorite, but pace makes the race. And that's why we are certainly both on Hit Show, the son of Candy Ride. I think he's got potential to be a, a nice horse, and I, I think he'll get his first graded stakes win here in the Withers, especially because of the pace scenario. All right, Matt, that's another show in the books. Next week, I want to talk some Kentucky Oaks with you. Maybe we'll visit uh, the Sam F. Davis field in Tampa as well. But that's next week. For now, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. 
yeah, as we said, Brian, you know, I, I really find it interesting that uh, uh, up to this point, except for maybe out on the West Coast, uh, I don't know, we really haven't seen the best derby prospects. Uh, these trainers are, are hanging on. There's actually a, a race on the undercard at Gulfstream Park for three-year-old males that may actually be uh, uh, as good a field or a better field than the Holy Bull. So anyway, it's an interesting uh, uh, Kentucky Derby trail with everything that's going on. And I know you'll stay with us as we go down the trail on Horse Center. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Uh, th thank you to everyone who's watching out there every week. We sure do appreciate it. Yeah, Matt's right. Matt hit it on the head with the uh, Kentucky Derby trail. The big horses are waiting a little bit. Special thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor. And Timeform US for the great pace projections. Folks, we'll be back right here next week with another big show, Horse Center. We're going to talk some Phillies next week. We're going to talk a little bit of Sam F. Davis. We will see you then right here on Horse Center.